Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku became the quirkless avenger part 1. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 2 comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content and live a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist. The author of the story The Hinakami from Wattpad. So let's start the video. As we enter this reality we come upon the Yagi's home. A loving family with a father, a mother, a brother, and a sister. However, what the son doesn't know is that his life will soon take a turn for the worst. His family will soon turn a blind eye to the actions of the daughter and what society does to the child. Their own actions will slowly turn into emotional abuse of their child due to their neglect of their oldest child Azuka Yagi. However, when life gives you hardships it also rewards you in the end. Let us follow the journey of Atlas the hero of Reliance who will shed the world with his group. Time skip, Izuka Yagi a four-year-old child who was playing with his younger sister, by one day, when they were called away to the front office of their school. They said goodbye to their childhood friends Bakugo Katsuki and Bakugo Kasumi who waved them goodbye. The brother and sister went to the front office and were picked up by their mother who was taking them to the doctor's office to receive their results about their quirks. It was at this moment in the doctor's office that Izuka's life would take a turn for the worst and it wasn't even his fault. It wasn't something he could control nor could be blamed for. It was the fault of someone else but he wouldn't learn of that fact until years later. After waiting for about an hour in the doctor's office since arriving. The doctor was finally ready to see them since the nurse had taken some of their BLD and completed other tests on the Yagis when they first arrived. As they were called back to the main doctor's office, Izuka for some reason felt like his world was about to shatter. Only if he knew how right he was. Hello, Mrs. Yagi. I have some good news and some bad news. Which one would you like me to provide first? Asked the doctor. Inko was shocked for a second because how could there be bad news about her children's quirks? I guess bad news first please. She responded nervously. The doctor just looked at her and then back down to his papers. He then put a page on the exam board that showed a foot x-ray. As you can see there isn't an extra toe joint in your son's body. However, his BLD work came back and it shows no active signs of a quirk. This means that he will be quirkless. I'm sorry. The doctor said. Izuku at that moment had dropped his All Might action figure down to the ground without even realizing it. Inko used her quirk to grab the toy while asking the doctor to explain more. It should be impossible to not have an active quirk gene in the body but your son doesn't show signs of having any active quirk gene. This means he won't receive a quirk said the doctor one more time before moving on to the good news. In the case of your doctor, we can see she will have a replicate of your quirk telekinesis. The quirk seems to be about as strong as your quirk is. As such. She should show signs of it in the next few weeks, the doctor said. Inko was thrilled for her daughter and turned around to her and hugged her. They were so happy that they didn't notice Izuku looking down with some tears in his eyes. Can I still be a hero even without a quirk? Is the thought that went through Izuku's mind at that moment. Then he remembered heroes like Eraserhead whose quirks only stopped other quirks. Yes, I can. I just have to train and try harder than anyone else will so I can achieve my dream of being the number one hero like All Might. Thought Izuku. Though Izuku didn't show this determination on the outside since he was still sad that his mother wasn't trying to console him and was only focusing on his sister's quirk. Inko just grabbed her things and told her son that it was time to go while she carried her daughter. The doctor knew what was going to happen but he couldn't do anything about it the boy's fate was sealed the moment he said that the son was quirkless. The doctor hated that fact and looked at the boy and said, just keep your head up high and don't give up. No matter what the world or your family throws at you. The doctor said. Izuku was confused about why the doctor said this. Surely his family would still love him. Surely his friends at school would still be his friends. Right. Izuku, his sister, and his mother all got into the car and started to head home. Izuku could only feel a pit of dread fill his stomach because he was not likely what he was seeing. 
His mother was only talking about his sister and hasn't even mentioned him once since they got in the car. It was all about how to celebrate his sister's getting her quirk like Izuku no longer existed. Soon they arrived at their home which was a smaller apartment. Izuku found his father waiting inside for the family. As soon as they entered the house he moved over to see how the doctor's appointment went. Well, how did the doctors go? What quirks did they get? Toshinori asked Inko. At this Inko froze for a second and made a glance at her son. She sighed and then looked at her husband. Izuku is quirkless, but Izumi has a replicate quirk of mine which means it's pretty strong, Inko said. Toshinori walked over to Izumi and picked her up and started to cheer with her and said that he would start training her soon in the future so she could grow up to be a strong hero. The entire family moved into the kitchen to start eating dinner. However, in truth, it wasn't the entire family. They were missing the son who they left at the door. Izuku just realized how true the words of the doctor were turning out to be and it hasn't even been a day since he was told he was quirkless. Izuku decides to just head to bed and hope that tomorrow would be different. That his parents would remember him and ask him how he was. Later that night Izumi would realize her brother didn't eat dinner with the family. She still loved her brother because he would always protect her when a kid attempted to bully her. However, she was scared for him since she has seen fights on the TV that showed heroes fighting powerful villains. If he doesn't have a quirk, then how can he fight villains? Won't he just die? Is the thought that went through her mind. As such, a pure thought of a four-year-old child turned Izuka's life for the next five years into hell. Time skip, it was now the next day at daycare. Izuka decided to go play in the sandbox by himself while Izumi took their childhood friends off to the side. Hey, Katsumi, Katsuki. We got told our quirks and mine is a version of my mother's quirk. Izumi said. Both of the Bakugos told her congratulations but had asked about Izuka's quirk. Izumi hesitated at this second but pushed forward because she didn't want to lose her brother. He doesn't have a quirk. He's quirkless according to the doctor. The doctor said he didn't have an active quirk gene in his body even though he doesn't have the double toe joint in his body. Izumi said. This made both of the Bakugos freeze. Izuku always wanted to be a hero so how was he going to do that if he didn't have a quirk? Then Izumi started to talk about her fears that she has about her brother becoming a hero and him dying to villains. The Bakugos agreed with Izumi and decided on a plan of action. If Izuku can't handle us picking on him then he will realize he can't be a hero. We just need to be mean to him until he gives up on his dream of being a hero. Katuski said. His sister didn't really know about that but Izumi quickly agreed with the idea since she didn't want to lose her brother. Soon a plan of action was decided that would set fate into motion for Izuku. About 30 minutes into playing Izuku saw his sister and childhood friends come over. Hey, brother do you still want to become a hero? Izumi asked as they all were around Izuku. Izuku had a bad feeling but responded regardless. Yes, more than anything I want to be able to protect people with a smile on my face and let them feel safe when I arrive. Izuku said with a bright smile on his face. Katsuki then punched Izuku in the stomach while he yelled, you should give up. Quirkless people can't become heroes, he yelled. Izumi just agreed as she kicked Izuku in the side. Soon Kasumi joined in a bit slowly but nonetheless joined in as well. They were calling Izuku names like useless, quirkless loser, and then Katsuki created a new name for Izuku. You know, your name can be read as Deku. That's it. You're Deku from now on. Katuski said. Soon the bell went off singling for everyone to return to class. Izuku got up and made his way back to the class while in pain. The day slowly passed but soon the end of the day came and it was time for everyone to go home. As Izuku made his way home with his sister she told him, just give up or else we won't ever stop. Izumi said. Soon they made it home and his parents just welcomed them back. They didn't bring up Izuku's bruise thinking he just roughhoused with Katsuki during daycare or else the daycare would have called. Time skip Izuku ate dinner with the family but kept his voice silent. 
His parents were worried a bit but put it off thinking he was still upset over the news of being quirkless and that he would soon start talking at the table again and being his cheerful self. Izuku made his way to his room after dinner and got on his computer and started to look up basic exercises that he could do for his age. He soon found a simple exercise plan for himself that included sit-ups, push-ups, running, planks, and some other things. He decided to start out small and slowly move his way up to higher amounts. It was at this moment that Izuku made his plan to start working out since he needed all the time he could use to be ready to be the world's first quirkless hero. Izuku decided to start out with a set of 30 of each workout and working his way up to doing a mile run as soon as he could. Once he got used to doing that set without much trouble he would slowly increase it. It has been two years already since I was diagnosed as quirkless by the doctor. My situation has only gotten worse as time passes. The verbal and physical abuse has only gotten tougher from my sister and former friends. Katsuki likes to use his quirk on my body in places that can be hidden. His sister doesn't use her quirk on me but still takes part in the physical and verbal abuse though not to the same degree as the others. My sister my own sister is the worst. She uses her quirk to trip me up and destroys my things by making them fall into puddles on the ground after it rained or tearing my pages up out of my hero notebook. The teachers in the schools don't really do much. They will scold a bit but never really punish them. Sometimes the teachers even slip up and call me Deku instead of my actual name. Other students have started to join in on the verbal abuse and physical abuse as well my parents are an entirely different story. Flashback one night I was awake later than normal and could hear my parents talking down in the living room. Tosh do you think Izuku is going to keep this phase up of his? He needs to learn that he can't just sulk forever about being quirkless. He is going to need to accept it and move on, my mother said. My father responded so after and he said something that caught my attention. I don't know honey. Maybe I should talk to him since I was quirkless as well but that would also result in me having to talk about one for all and I don't think it's a good idea to bring that up to him. I am planning to give it currently to Izumi and I don't want Izuku to get upset about him not receiving one for all. I just don't see the same drive that Izumi has to be a hero that Izuku would need to be worth of one for all. Tashinori said. Flashback end, something inside me broke at that. I don't really know everything about one for all but it is clear that my own father was quirkless, he himself received a quirk from someone else. He thought I wasn't worthy of whatever one for all was and was planning to give it to my sister. The same person who believed it was okay that it was right that it was acceptable to harm another person physically and verbally day in and day out. That was just hilarious to me. They also haven't realized that I haven't really spent much time with them in the past two years at all. I've learned how to cook my own meals because my own mother stopped making them for me. I had to at the age of six learn how to cook and clean for myself because my own family has more or less forgotten my existence. The only time they remember me is when they want to complain about me like that night. Otherwise, I don't exist. I'm in none of the family photos on the wall nor am I ever taken out with the family to go meet people. I've resorted to doing random jobs for people in the neighborhood who take pity on me and give me some money for the random jobs. This allows me to pay for some of the things I need and the lessons I take outside of my parents' knowledge. I have also recently started taking martial art lessons at a local dojo that knows a bit about my situation and was willing to forego the parents' signatures to allow me in the dojo. Flashback, Izuku POV I was running away from my sister and her friends one day after they decided to teach me my place, according to Katsuki. They decided to be extra tough on me that day. I knew I had some cuts across my back and several burns that will likely scar thanks to Katsuki. My sister even used her quirk to throw rocks at me which will leave a lot of bruises on my body. When I decided to take a new route that I saw one day I had escaped my attackers but I found myself in front of a dojo that had a sign that said they were looking for students. The sign said they teach multiple martial arts and basic handling of a pole weapon. This caught my attention and I decided to walk into the dojo. I soon found myself in the building where I saw an older male sitting in a room drinking tea. I watched the male for a few moments when he spoke up which made me fall back on my butt. I know you are outside young child. Why don't you come in here? I can hear you breathing a bit off. 
Why is that? asked the man. I decided to risk it and go inside. The only thing he could do worse than the others is to kill me. I soon made my way over to him and sat in front of him. Hello, child. What is your name? He asked me. I decided to see his reaction so I went with my normal introduction when I want to know if I can trust someone. I'm Izuku and I'm quirkless, I said with a straight face. He froze a bit while drinking his tea but then kept going. I see. Now, why are you here Izuku, he asked. He only slowed down for a bit before he kept going. So he either is really good at hiding his emotions or doesn't care I thought. I saw the sign outside and would like to take classes. I can pay only a bit of money and my family can't know about this. They would never agree since they see me as glass because I'm quirkless. However, I refuse. I am to be the world's first quirkless hero. I stated with determination. Fong's POV, this child I can tell that he is being harmed but from who I don't know. He said his family treats him like glass so it might be from his family or others around him. He seems to have done some physical training himself. The fact that he doesn't want his family to know is concerning and suggests that he might be getting harmed at home by family. The fact that he wants to be a quirkless hero is shocking because of how much determination I can see in his eyes. Interesting. Let's see how this goes I guess. Oh. Please explain why I should risk my dojo by teaching you without your parents' consent. Even if they treat you like glass they are sure to notice you gone for long hours that you would need to be gone to train. No. I asked. They won't. My family doesn't really acknowledge my existence. I've had to learn how to cook, clean, and take care of everything by myself because my parents have forgotten my existence. They only acknowledge me when they wish to complain about something. My sister and her friends physically and verbally attack me almost every single day and my parents never notice the wounds and scars that lay across my body. So you wouldn't really be having any risk to your dojo. I already spend most of my time outside of the house doing some training or doing odd jobs to raise money for anything I need to survive so they won't notice me gone anyway. Izuku said to Fong. Fong was at what he heard. Flashback end, that was how I found myself learning from Fong about basic martial arts styles and basic weapons handling for a pole weapon. I've so far been learning at a good pace according to Fong since I only found him half a year ago. I also learned that Fong's quirk is a minor energy manipulation that allows him to put a lot of energy into his attacks since he has trained his quirk to blend into his martial arts. Once soon the time passed and it was nearly the end of the year. I've been training at the dojo in martial arts and Fong has had me building muscle a bit by clearing the dirty beach that is filled with trash. The beach is called Tacoba Municipal Beach. Fong said it would help me build muscles over time and would be a great way to give back to the community. It has been relatively easy keeping my training hidden from the family since it's not unusual for me to be out of the house almost always. I would show up at the house after school where my parents would ignore me and my wounds while they would welcome my sister home. After about 30 minutes I would change clothes and head outside. I shouted back towards my parents that I was going to go out and would be back later. They would just wave their hands and never respond verbally to me when I said this. This didn't bother me as much as it did the first year anymore since I knew by now that they didn't care for me. That they only cared for my younger sister. As such, I stopped trying to get their approval or attention since I now had a goal and didn't want them to stop me. Time has passed and now roughly two and a half years have passed. It's been four and a half years since I was diagnosed as quirkless and four and a half years since my family stopped caring about me. Over the years I have completed quite a few things and have improved my training quite a lot. Fong has told me how proud he is of me with what I've completed. The beach that Fong wanted me to clean has been completed a few weeks ago. The beach started out with a large amount of trash and I thought I would never clean it at my age. Soon the beach was cleaned and it looked amazing and the results for my body have paid off. Though I'm still short a bit for my age. I still have a better body than most older adults. 
Fong said that we will move away from muscle building and to more training that will make my muscles more dense and firm since I will need to be able to keep speed and agility as my main source of combat ability 38 Fong said that we will move away from muscle building and to more training that will make my muscles more dense and firm since I will need to be able to keep speed and agility as my main source of combat ability. This is because if I put too much muscle on I won't be able to move fast enough or agile enough to defeat my opponents and will be a sitting duck for attacks from others if I put too much muscle on since it would slow me down. Fong had let me take a break from training since he needs to go out on a mission and would return in a few months time. As such, I decided to return home earlier. Though, it seems I was unlucky on this day because I would soon have a run-in with my favorite hero of all time and I would learn several truths that would destroy my heart but would lead me to have a large change in my life as well. Time skip, third POV, we can see Izuku is on his way home. He decided to take a different path to go home but would soon come to regret this decision. As Izuku walked under an underpass he heard a noise from behind him. He turned around and was face to face with a sludge villain that just started to talk to him. Damn it, I didn't know he was in town. However, kid today is your unlucky day. You will become my new bodysuit and allow me to escape from him, yelled out the sludge villain as he attacked Izuku. Overall, Izuku was able to dodge the villain and even cause some damage by throwing rocks on the ground into the villain's eyes 11 overall. Izuku was able to dodge the villain and even cause some damage by throwing rocks on the ground into the villain's eyes. This just off the villain even more but the villain ran out of time. The villain heard a sound coming from behind him and knew who it was. Ahaha, ah, have no fear because I am here, yelled out All Might as he came out of the sewer and did a Texas smash on the villain. All Might POV, damn it, I've lost the villain in these damn sewers. I just had to go and push myself today didn't I? I'm just glad I will start Izumi's training soon so she can start getting a grasp on one for all in time before UA in 5 years. My thoughts cut off as I came out of the sewer and said my tagline. I saw my son. He was being attacked by the sludge villain. I yelled out my attack and knocked the villain out. However, my son soon asked me a question that I would later come to regret how I answer him. I would live with this regret for the rest of my life. All Might. Can I get a signature please, asked Izuku. I gave him the signature and was about to leave when he asked the question. All Might wait. I need to ask you a question. Please don't ask what I think you're going to ask son. I thought. Yes young. I asked. He provided his name. What is your question young Yagi? I asked him knowing what he was likely going to ask. Can I be a hero like you even though I'm quirkless? Izuku asked. I looked him over and saw how baggy his clothing was on his body. In his condition, he could never be a hero. Especially with the fact that he is quirkless. I could give him one for all but no I plan to give it to Izumi who has shown a drive to be a hero unlike Izuku who leaves the house all day and does God's knows what. He hasn't talked to the family or shown a drive to be a hero at all. I thought. Then I said it. The words I would regret for the rest of my life. Young Yagi. I can't tell you that you can be a hero. It's unrealistic for someone without power to beat people with power. I suggest you plan to be a cop or something. It's fine to dream but you should be realistic about it. I said to him as I turned around and jumped away. If I had waited a few more moments I would have seen the devastation on his face. I also didn't notice the bottle with the sludge villain slipping out of my pocket as I jumped away. 20 Azuka POV, I didn't know what to think I all might he is the person that has always said on TV that anyone could be a hero. Yet, he doesn't think quirkless people can be heroes that you need the power to be a hero. Then what about Eraserhead, what about Principal Nizu of UA who quirks don't have any combat abilities? What about all those heroes who don't have combat quirks? I refuse to lower my head to that notion that quirkless people can't be heroes. I will prove everyone wrong. I will even prove you wrong all might. My family doesn't believe in me nor all might. What's new? Nothing. My eyes just lit up in determination as I heard an explosion a few blocks away. I decided to go see what it was. 
Soon, I arrived at the site of the explosion and saw that the sludge villain that All Might had captured had escaped him. I then heard the crowd talking about how the villain had a kid hostage. I looked through the crowd and saw that it was Katsuki. For some reason, my body was about to run and save one of my main bullies when Green Tornado the wife of All Might showed up to save the day. She had pulled Katsuki out of the sludge villain when All Might showed up to smash the villain again. Everyone was congratulating Katsuki and telling him that he would be an amazing hero with his quirk. Yet they don't know he's suicide baited last week. How is that hero material, I thought. Soon I started to walk away but noticed something fly over my head which looked like All Might and Green Tornado carrying three people. I decided I wanted to take a look and I came upon a street near an alleyway where I heard the voices. It's All Might, Green Tornado, and those three voices sound like Izumi, Katsuki, and Kasumi. Why are they here? I thought. Soon I received my answer. Aha, we are her, spits BLD as your parents Izumi said All Might. Wait, parents. That means All Might and Green Tornado are my parents as well. That means All Might told his own son, I thought as I heard them talking more. Wait if dad is All Might then mom is Green Tornado. Why are you telling us? Asked Izumi. The reason we are telling you this is because your father's quirk needs to be passed on. Bakugos we are trusting you since your family has been friends with us for a long time and you're our kids' friends. Inko says. All Might then goes to explain how one for all works which made Izumi ask about me. Why not give it to Izuku? He does want to be a hero after all and he is quirkless after all. Izumi asked. My parents just looked at each other and All Might then said, I don't think he has the drive to be a hero. He goes out all night and comes back at random times. He never communicates with the family either. Honestly, I'm worried that he might be doing some illegal things, my father said. That made me mad that they are blaming me for the communication problem. Also, they don't know if I have the drive or not since they never interact with me. The fact that they think I am doing criminal things also me off. It was at that moment that I started to run back to the house. I wasn't going to stay with them anymore. I refused to stay there. I already have to take care of myself and earn money to live. I will just need to find a job to earn more to live but I am sure I can do it. Time skip, third POV, the rest of the Yagi family made it back to the house after talking some more. They soon entered the house and Inko started to prepare dinner. However, no one noticed the missing member of the Yagi family. No one checked his room to see if he was there since they have never been in his room in years. As such, they didn't find the note nor would they find the note for several days when Izumi would notice her brother was missing from class. It would be at that point the truth of what they have done would hit them. It would be at that point that they would realize they had lost their family member and it was their fault. They would question themselves for quite some time if they would ever find their missing family member again but unknown to them it would be years before they came face to face with him. Izuku POV, well, I've done it. I've grabbed my things and bolted out of the house. I grabbed most of my important things like my notebooks, clothing, money, and any personal items. I left all of the All Might merchandise in my room and had destroyed most of them since I now hate my father with a burning passion. He himself was quirkless and had a way for me to be a hero yet he thinks I'm doing illegal things and was turning into a villain. If I did it would be their fault since they neglected and abused me. I decided to make a stop at the beach that I cleaned before I would go find a broken down house or warehouse to sleep in for the night. I don't want to go to Fong's dojo since I don't want to bother him. He's done enough for me over the years and I don't want to burden him anymore. Especially if my family found out about him. I don't need him getting into legal trouble and facing off against All Might in court. However, once I arrived at the beach I found a fight going on between two men. One was an older male while the other was a guy in an outfit that made him look like a villain. The older male had brown hair and some white mixed on the sides. He had a slash mark across his left arm from the sword in the villain's hand. Hisashi, it's time for you to die. I've been aiming to kill you since your group destroyed all of my operations years ago. Now I will have my revenge, yelled the villain, Hisashi, it's time for you to die. 
I've been aiming to kill you since your group destroyed all of my operations years ago. Now I will have my revenge, yelled the villain. Damn it, the group isn't going make it here in time, the man named Hisashi grunted out. As the villain raised his sword, I felt my body heat up for some reason as I started to run towards the villain. Wait kid stop, yelled Hisashi, the villain turned and saw me but it was too late. Get away from him. I yelled out as I dodged the sword slash as Fong taught me and then I landed my fist against the villain's jaw which sent him flying far away down the beach. It sent him far further than I thought possible for my body's strength. What the Hisashi said. Soon several black military-style trucks pulled up and out came men in military gear. They ran over to me and Hisashi and yelled out for him. Sir are you okay and who is this boy one man said. Hisashi looked over to them and said I'm fine. The boy saved me right when I was about to be killed. My attacker is down the beach. The kid knocked him out with his quirk. Hisashi said. I don't have a quirk, I said which made Hisashi and the mercenary look at me confused. Impossible with how far you hit him, the man in black said. I can't have a quirk. The doctor said I was quirkless. That's the reason my family neglected me. That's the reason I had to go through all the damn abuse. Why did the doctor lie to me? I just ran away from home because I couldn't take it anymore and now I find out I have a quirk. God life must hate me. I yelled out in anger. The other men had detained the villain and locked him into one of the trucks. They came around me and heard my yelling. Everyone was shocked as I just collapsed onto the ground. Hisashi POV, this kid saved me while thinking he was quirkless. I checked his body and saw he was just out of it for using his new quirk for the first time. I noticed under his shirt that he had trained his body quite well. He said he was neglected and abused which caused him to run away from home maybe maybe it was fate for us to meet. It's time to go. However, bring the boy with us. We're returning to Germany. Also, have a few men start looking into him. His ID in his pocket says his name is Izuka Yagi. Find everything you can about him and see if you can verify his statements about the abuse and neglect. Pull video footage from his schools and anywhere he goes. I told my men as I and Izuku were loaded into one of the trucks which started to head towards the private airport for my company's planes. I might just have found a successor to take over Titan Group and all of my companies. I'm not getting any younger anyway and Sophia always did want to adopt another kid when she and our son Ray was still alive after all. It was a long time before Izuka woke up. This was due to the fact that his body wasn't used to using so much power from his quirk that he activated. It had laid dormant for years since he didn't try activating it. This meant the power had built up and put a lot of strain on his body when he first used it. Izuku soon found himself waking up in an unknown room. This room looked like a medical bay in some building. Ugh too, ugh. What happened? Izuku groaned out as he attempted to sit up. However, he was pushed back down on the bed by a hand. Izuku opened his eyes and saw that it was the man named Hisashi. Who are you, sir? I know the villain said your name was Hisashi but nothing else. Izuku asked the man. Oh. You don't recognize me. Hisashi asked a little surprised that someone didn't know who he was. No. Should I? Izuku froze for a few moments as he saw the word Titan written on the wall across from him. Hisashi knew where Izuku was looking and was waiting for Izuku to put the information together. Hisashi Hisashi Midoiriya of the Titan Mercenary Group is responsible for carrying out a lot of undisclosed missions and a lot of disclosed missions for the UN and other governments of the world. You deal with threats that normal heroes can't deal with or threats that the government isn't willing to deal with. You also do private work for individuals that request and pay for it but the missions can't go against any regulation set by the UN which you make clear to any person seeking your group's help. Izuku said without taking a breath. This caught Hisashi's attention since Izuku knew a bit more than the average person would normally know of the group. Most people only know that the group does work for the UN and that's it. Correct on your information, Izuku Yagi. Now can you tell me why you decided to help me with that villain and what is going on with the new quirk you've just gotten? 
I want to hear everything from you before I make a decision on what to do with you. Okay. Asked Hisashi. Izuku felt warm and safe next to Hisashi and he didn't know why. Izuku just agreed to give the person anything he wanted since Hisashi shouldn't harm him since Izuku had saved him. There wasn't much going on in my head when I helped you. My body just started to really move before I knew what I was doing. I had gone to that beach since I was the one that cleaned it. I wanted to stop at it before I tried to find a place to sleep for the night. I had just run away from my home since I could no longer take the neglect from my family and the abuse from my sister and everyone else. My parents ignored my wounds whenever I was home and thought I was doing illegal things since I went out to train every day. That day I had found out that All Might and Green Torrendo were my parents. All Might had told me about 30 minutes before the second sludge villain attack that quirkless people could never be heroes and I should be realistic and go be a police officer or something. I later learned he was my father after he and Green Tornado took my sister and her friends Katsuki and Kasumi Bakugo off to an alley where they revealed their identities and told my sister some information. They also said that I didn't have the drive of being a hero and talked about how they thought I was doing illegal things since I left the house every day and came back later and wasn't communicating with the family. The problem with that thought process is that they stopped caring for me and talking to me when I was around 4 to 5. I had quickly learned how to cook, clean, and overall care for myself since my mother stopped cooking and doing things for me. I also started to do odd jobs for people to earn money to support myself since I was never given an allowance either. I did find a dojo that allowed me to train at. I don't want to say his name so he can't get in trouble since Japan requires parent approval for training in dojos. This is a good overall summary of my life of being beaten, verbally abused by everyone, and neglected by my parents. And suicided baited as well recently. Anything else you need to know? Izuku said in one entire breath. This shocked Hisashi and the guards he had in the room since Izuku said that all in one go. Hisashi then looked over to one of his men who nodded his head and made a sign that showed Hisashi that Izuku was 100% truthful. This man had a quirk that was similar to a lie detector. The quirk allowed the guard to see a person in colors when activated. The more red someone turned meant that the person was lying more and more. However, if the person turned green then they were being more truthful. It didn't let them know what was a lie or a truth but allowed them to see how truthful someone was being with them overall. This allowed them to get a general idea if they could trust the person. Izuku never said one lie and was 100% green. Hisashi was disturbed by the amount of pain and suffering Izuku had gone through and could still smile and help people that he didn't even know when he had thought he was quirkless. Hisashi had come to a decision. Izuku was going to be his new son and he would raise him how he should have been. So I will be truthful. I had a guard in the room with a quirk that allows us to tell how truthful you are. Hisashi said as he pointed out the guard to Izuku who just waved at the guard. The guard looked like he wanted to laugh. I am amazed at the fact that you can still smile after so much pain. You even saved me when you didn't even know me nor thought you had a quirk. For that, I want to offer you a new path for you to take in your life. You can reject me and I'll help you in another way. But the offer I want to make is to adopt you. My wife and son are deceased now and I'm alone in this world. As such, I want to take you in as my new son. My wife was always wanting to adopt a child when she was still alive. As such, Izuka Yagi, do you want to become Izuka Midoriya? Hisashi asked. Izuka POV, I froze I didn't know what to think I was just offered to be adopted by Hisashi Midoriya the leader of the Titan group and the world's wealthiest businessman. If I accepted I could get far more help on becoming a hero. However, how will he be able to adopt me when my parents are top heroes in the country? I want to accept. However, how would you adopt me since my parents are the top heroes of the country? They wouldn't let it happen. I asked. Hisashi just looked at me and laughed a bit. Izuku we aren't in Japan anymore. We're in Germany. You've been asleep for about two to three days now. It's Monday currently and I've checked the news and so far they haven't noticed you're gone. Also, adopting you. Will be easy since it can be done here in Germany and the UN will approve of it. 
They owe us a lot of favors and when they learn about how All Might was to his own child and me wanting to adopt the said child. Well they will agree quickly since they have always been concerned about who would inherit my companies and mercenary group. Hisashi said. Then please adopt me wait air. What? I said. Hisashi just laughed at me. I pouted a bit and he just grabbed my head and made a mess of my hair. Yes, air. As my son, you will need to learn how to handle the Titan group and run all of my business. As such, being my son is no easy task since you must be strong to run the mercenary group and smart enough to run the companies. You will also need to train to be a hero if you are still wanting to do that. When you are old enough you can enroll in the number one hero school in the world that is located here in Germany. Though we do need you to learn German and some other languages soon so you can help in the business and the mercenary group. Hisashi said. Though he didn't know I know parts of other languages since Fong taught me some on the side. It's mostly enough for very very basic conversations and directions. I do know some parts in German and other languages to hold very basic conversations and ask for directions, I said while speaking German. This caught everyone's attention quickly. Can you tell me where you learned since that was pretty decent, Hisashi asked. I explained that it was the same person that taught me martial arts in the dojo. The dojo owner knew some other languages and taught me basic phrases and things so I could have some basic understanding if I ever needed it. Then I remembered that Fong would be wondering what happened to me when he returned to Japan from his mission. Ah, uh, he says, sorry, I mean dad. He had asked me to start calling him that. Could you have someone deliver something to the dojo owner so he doesn't worry about me? He knew some of my home life, but not everything. He might get worried once he returns to Japan from his mission. He was a mercenary as well. His name was Silver Fong. I said. Dad had a very shocked look on his face and everyone in the room came to a stop and looked at me. I asked what was wrong and soon got shocked myself. Izuku are you sure his name was Silver Fong, asked Dad which I confirmed and gave a general description. Son you don't have to worry about him. I'll call him later and have him come to Germany. He actually works for me. He was one of the people I was going to have you train with later on. He is one of my top mercenaries that works for me and carries out missions from time to time in the Asia area. Dad said. I was shocked. The person I've been learning from worked for my new father. How the hell does that happen? Well, the world works in weird ways anyways, we should prank him. When you have him come you shouldn't say it's about me so we can surprise him when he sees me. I said while fist pumping in the air since I could never get a prank on Fong while I was at his dojo. Dad just looked at me like I was crazy and I told him why I wanted to prank him. Dad just shook his head and laughed a bit. Dad had a doctor bring over some test results that they had run on me while I was asleep. We then started to talk about my newfound quirk and what the Titan group had discovered while researching me to verify my story on the beach about a new quirk. They discovered that the doctor's office we went to had made a mistake and given me the BLD results of another person who was indeed quirkless. The results for the blood work that the Titan group ran showed I had a high level of quirk genes in my body. It was to the point that they brought in one of their men from another base nearby and had him look at me. This guard had a quirk that could figure out someone's quirk once it was activated. We soon learned that I had two quirks and something that neither the doctors nor agent could understand. The quirks were solar stockpile and energy manipulation. See descriptions in the author note page. The solar stockpile has been passive my entire life since I never attempted to activate it but it was growing in power and would keep growing. All the time I was in the sun I was absorbing power without knowing it. Now I will absorb power at a faster rate since I now have it active. I could also manipulate my energy to come outside my body or use it inside my body. Dad said we would train my quirks later and get a better understanding of my current limits and figure out ways to improve them. Then we talked about the unknown quirk or power. The agent and doctors said it's something that is requiring a third-party source to trigger but don't know what it is. They explained that there is a chance it will never activate and I shouldn't worry about it since we don't know if I will ever receive it. As such, it was time to go to my new home. Ready to go home, son, dad asked. Yes. 
I responded. This was the start of my new life in Germany. Soon Izuku and his new dad, Hisashi, arrived outside where they got into an armored car that was parked out front of the Titan's medical base. Once inside Izuku and Hisashi were then driven towards the center of the city. Once inside Izuku and Hisashi were then driven towards the center of the city too, I hope you don't mind but we will live in the city. It's not a large mansion but a large business building that I run the Titans organization out of. The business all have separate buildings but I do most of Titans and the business meetings in this main building where I have many floors dedicated to residential space for me and now you. There are many different things that the Titan group has in the building but also private levels just for you and me. Hisashi said. After about a 35-minute drive into the city. They pulled up upon a large skyscraper that towered over all of the other buildings and had a train line connection to the building. Hisashi explained that it's for a large number of supplies to be brought into the building since the building also houses agents a lot of the time on the lower levels underground. Hisashi explained that it's for a large number of supplies to be brought into the building since the building also houses agents a lot of the time on the lower levels underground 42 asterisk imagine a large grass and tree area that surrounds the bottom of the building. There are other buildings but they are on other blocks. The Titans group building sits in the center of a block of land. Asterisk, I'm going to show you around the house and let you get comfortable for a bit before I take you and introduce you to all the leaders of Titan. You will meet the board of directors for my businesses later but it's more important that you meet the Titan leaders first. You will be working with them sooner than the business leaders since you will be trained by Titan for your future. Hisashi said. I understand dad. Thanks again for all of this. Izuku said. Hisashi just placed his hand on top of Izuku's head which he just leaned into since he hasn't really ever gotten warm and kind touching from anyone. I like it when you put your hand on my head. It feels nice is this what it feels like to be loved, Izuku asked in a low tone not thinking Hisashi would hear, but he did. Hisashi just wanted to kill All Might but that would cause trouble in Japan and the UN wouldn't be happy. They would look the other way and approve an adoption but not the killing of All Might. They entered the building. And took an elevator that only Hisashi and a few people could access and went up to the private living floors that belonged to Hisashi and Izuku only. These floors were the top six floors. They arrived and Izuku saw the living room which looked like, off to the side is the large kitchen. Now you said you know how to cook which is good. Sometimes I will be out for work. However, if you don't want to cook one night and I'm not here to do so then you can call downstairs to the building kitchen staff who can prepare something for you and they will call you down to grab it since no many people have access to these floors. Hisashi said. Now. I have a large wine collection room that doesn't have a key on the door. I'm trusting you to know that you can't drink anytime soon. I don't care if you want to use some wine to cook with though. However. Please let me know which wine bottle you use so I can drink the rest later on so it doesn't go bad. Also, try to keep using the same bottle of wine for cooking so you don't open more than we need. Hisashi said. I understand. Izuku replied. Now this is the main floor of the living area. We have different things on different floors but we have three floors with many bedrooms on it which are all above the living area floor. I live on the floor right above this floor. Then we have two more floors. I think you would like the room on the very top floor. Let me show you. Hisashi said. Now, we've seen your room. Let's go look at the rooms I use for myself or where I spend a lot of time so you know where you might find me without searching each room. Hisashi said. Soon they found themselves in Hisashi's room. Main study room, Izuku will use it from time to time as well main study room. Izuku will use it from time to time as well. 16 Billiard Room Hisashi's main office, uses it when he doesn't go down to Titan floors Hisashi's main office, uses it when he doesn't go down to Titan floors. Now let's move down to the other rooms that we have on our private floors that are below the main living floor, now let's move down to the other rooms that we have on our private floors that are below the main living floor. We have a large pool slash spa room first. Hisashi said. On the last private floor, we can also find a combat slash training floor which does connect to a separate weapons training room as well as Zoku POV, 
I was shocked at the number of things that are limited to just dad and myself. I know he had a child and wife before. But even then, this is a lot of space for just three people. I know I want to ask dad about his deceased wife and son later but not right now. I will when it feels more comfortable doing so. Soon though we finished looking at the other random rooms which just contained either empty bedrooms or rooms that I will likely not touch since even dad said he doesn't touch them. Most of the rooms were storage rooms for old things that he has gathered over the years from missions. After spending about two hours relaxing around the house and getting used to the place, dad returned with a keycard, an ID, and some medical injection device. What is all that? I asked him. This keycard is to get you into the building. The ID is for you to keep in the event you're ever asked for identification. The UN has approved the adoption and they were to hear about what All Might did. As such, the ID is your new papers and proof of citizenship here in Germany and your name is now Izuka Midoriya. The UN did have to invalidate your Japanese citizen when they got Germany to grant you German citizenship since I live here almost year-round. Hope you're not mad about that. Izuku wasn't, also, the medical injector is for a microchip to be placed in your body. This chip acts as a keycard to get into the private living floors as well as any secured room that belongs to Titan or my businesses. It can also be used to access any private document or other things that belong to me. Your authorization matches mine so don't abuse this. It also acts as a GPS but is deactivated unless we ping it. Hisashi said. He also handed Izuku a phone that could alert the Titan mercenary group that he needed help. To alert the nearest Titan group of your location and that you need assistance you just press the special button built on this phone. Hit it 5 times to request a ride from your location. Hit it 10 times if you need a tactical assault group on your location because of a threat. Hisashi said. Thank you. Dad. While we are just talking, can you tell me about your deceased wife and son? I would like to know about them since they would have been my family if they were still alive. Also, would it be weird if I called them mom and brother? I asked a bit nervous since I really wanted to learn about them. Dad was silent for a moment before he started to talk. Soon he explained what they were like and what they liked to do. He also explained that they died due to a villain attack when he was younger and that is how the Titan group came to be since he didn't want more people to go through his pain. Also, it wouldn't be weird for you to call them that. I'm sure they would be happy in heaven to hear that from you. Dad said with a smile on his face. I just hugged him and thanked him again for giving me a home. Another hour passed and it was time to go meet the leaders of the mercenary group Titan. These leaders were the people that commanded most of the group when Dad was not directing managing something. Dad also said that Silver Fong was waiting downstairs as well but Fong didn't know what he was called for. As such, we headed down to the lower levels below the ground floor and into the Titan floors. We soon arrived at the main command floor of Titan and the elevator opened. We soon arrived at the main command floor of Titan and the elevator opened everyone in the room saluted to Dad when they entered the room. However, one did not because he was too shocked. Izuku why the hell are you here? Yelled Fong which made everyone look at him in shock since it's strong to get him to yell. Yes. I got a big reaction out of you Fong. I said as I ran up and hugged him. He was still shocked and so was everyone in the room except dad since he knew this would happen. I see you know my new adopted son Izuku, Fong, dad said. Fong just looked up at him in surprise and then his face turned into one filled with rage which confused everyone in the room except me and dad since we know why he is, Izuku, he just said new adopted. I know your home life was horrible, but for you to get adopted. What did they do? Fong said with the last part in a very cold tone which made a lot of the Titan members freeze since Fong was a veteran mercenary that rarely got off. Soon dad explained everything that happened and how so far my old family still hasn't found out about me leaving home yet. Fong was not happy. Hisashi, I would like to have myself reassigned to Germany so I can keep my training of Izuka going. I'm assuming you're introducing him to everyone with the intention of him taking over Titan and all of your business. If so, I approve of him and will start increasing the training I've been doing with him. Fong said. 
All of the leaders of Titan were catching up with the information but soon realized who I was and why I was there. The reason that Dad wanted to introduce me to the Titan leaders was that we needed them to approve of me leading them in the future when Dad decides to step down and let me take over. It seems Fong approving of me had a large impact on them. Though so it seems it will be easier to get done. Hello everyone. I'm pleased to meet my dad's men. I hope we can work well together in the future and I can learn a lot from you all. I said as I bowed my head a bit to show respect to them. It seemed to work as none of them were voting rejections of me being there. One leader did ask for confirmation of what dad had planned for me and dad told them everything about me taking over the mercenary group in the future, the businesses, and the plans for me to become a hero since that was my goal of doing. He also told them how I was assumed quirkless due to a lab result and how I awakened my quirk to save him. From what we know his quirk stockpiles power off of light energy or solar. So I plan to have a solar generator room created that Izuku can use to supply himself quicker instead of me relying upon the sun 24-7. It will also act as a backup power source for the building if the main supply and backup fail for some reason. Soon we had reached an agreement on a general plan on how I would be trained. Fong would keep teaching me martial arts. Leader number one Kale would teach me weapons training, leader number two Mark would teach languages and general education to ensure I'm up to speed when I start middle school next semester, leader number three Ace would be teaching me tactics and strategy in combat and how to incorporate my martial arts and weapons training into real combat while planning. When they talked about strategy and planning, I had remembered my notebooks and decided to show one that I had kept on me in my hoodie. Hey dad. I want to show you this. I don't know how good it is but since I had planned to be a quirkless hero I studied quirks and heroes. I said. He started to look over the book and then called Ace over who looked at it and was impressed. Izuku, this is really good work. A bit messy but overall good work. We will incorporate this in your planning and strategy training. Ace said which made me happy that it was considered good for me learning it myself. Soon we talked a bit more before I and dad headed back upstairs for the night to eat. It has been about six days since Izuku had run away from home. He ran away on a Friday night after the sludge villain incident. He fell asleep and awoke in Germany on Monday. As such, it's now Wednesday afternoon and Izumi is returning home worried since she hasn't seen her brother at school on Monday, Tuesday, or today. She ran into the house and called out for her parents. M.O.M. Dad. Izumi yelled. The parents came towards the door worried about their daughter's tone. Yes Izumi what is it that has you sounding so worried? Asked Inko. Toshinori just stood by looking worried for his daughter. Have you seen Izuku? I haven't seen him at school for the past few days and I've just noticed I haven't seen him in a while either. The last day I know I saw him was on Friday last week. Izumi said which caused her parents to freeze. Inko was worried about her son and Toshinori was worried about his son but also because what he said has come back to hit him in the face. He just realized the true weight of the words he said in his All Might form and was starting to freak out about what Izuku could have done based on his words. Izumi decided to run into Izuku's room and check if he was in there or not since no one has seen him. The sight she found was horrifying for her. Dad. M.O.M. Get in here. Izumi yelled out in fear. The parents came running in and froze at what they saw. Oh no. What did I do, thought Toshinori. They found Izuku's room destroyed. All of his All Might toys and collection were destroyed on the ground. There is a note, Izumi said as she picked it up and started to read. Then she dropped it after she read it, I'm so sorry Izuku. I'm so sorry. Izumi said as she started to cry out. Her parents made their way over to the note and they were shocked into tears as well. The note read as the following, Dear Toshinori Yagi and Inko Yagi, if you're reading this then that means you found the note. It also means I ran away because I couldn't take the abuse and neglect anymore. You're wondering what I'm talking about, aren't you? What abuse? What neglect? I'm talking about how you all forgot about me since I was diagnosed as quirkless at the age of four. From that moment forward you all started to forget about me and ignore my existence. 
Don't say you didn't because Inko, when was the last time you cooked me a meal or fed me anything? Ah, that's right. It was about the age of five. I had to learn how to cook and clean for myself or I would have starved to death long before now. Now, let's move to the abuse. Neglect is a form of abuse, but I'm also talking about physical and emotional abuse. Emotional abuse, you all just never supported me and treated me like glass. You left me to die or survive on my own and never gave me any positive reinforcement in my life. Next, we have the physical abuse. Sure, neither of you got physical but your golden girl daughter sure did with her friends. Did you know that she started to beat me at the age of four? She got Katsuki and Kasumi Bakugo together with her and they would physically and verbally abuse me. They would use their quirks on me or my property. This went on from the age of four. It was even done in front of the teachers and they never did anything. Even the other students started to attack me physically and verbally day in and day out. Did you know, my dear sister and her friends created a new name for me. It's Deka meaning worthless. They used it so much that everyone at school and the teachers would use the name to call upon me. As such, I had no choice but to respond to it. Do you know what it feels like to have your humanity ripped from you? No, I'm doubtful even you do Toshinori. Even though you used to be just like me. I did hear everything in that alley when you told the three by the way. Funny isn't it? I was said to be without drive to be a hero and the abusers were said to have the drive. Did you know that those abusers also told me, if you want a quirk so badly, then go take a swan dive off the roof and pray for it in your next life. How am I without the drive to be a hero? Did you know from the age of four I trained every single day and learned martial arts and some weapons handling so I could become the world's first quirkless hero? Ironic, how my fate was sealed that day at the age of four. It's so ironic that even the quirk doctor knew that day that I would end up with this result. As another statistic. I don't want to be another statistic. Did you know I met All Might the day I saw you all in the alley and learned the truth about you too? Did you know, I was told to be realistic by All Might after he saved me from a villain. It's okay to dream, but keep it realistic. All Might said. I wonder if All Might ever looked at the quirkless statistic for employment. Toshinori do you think he ever looked because I don't think he did. I think if he was like me and wanted to be a hero so badly that he refused to look at them. However, I know them. 95% of quirkless people can't find a job anywhere Toshinori. Do you think All Might knows that quirkless people aren't seen or treated as humans? That we are treated as dogs that can be killed on the spot. I refuse to be a dog anymore for this family. I refuse to have my humanity stripped from me anymore like I'm so lab rat. I have the right to life just as much as the next person. However, this world seems to be set on removing my human rights. To strip me of my humanity. As such. I ran away from home and decided to make a new life for myself. I've survived in this house doing everything myself. As such, I'm off to make an attempt to create a new life for myself in the world. Will I survive or will I die? That's the question now, isn't it? I wonder though when you will notice my absence. I'm betting on Izumi noticing I've been gone from school for roughly two to three days before she alerts anyone. That would just be sad that you didn't realize your child was gone for so long. How are you going to explain this to the world Toshinori? I hereby disown myself from the Yagi name. From your former son Izuku. The letter was shocking. They didn't know how to react. Their son was gone for days and they just realized it. What is worst is that they can't deny anything that was said in the letter. Inko had broken down in tears on the floor as she started to remember the little amount of time she had spent with her son. Toshinori just felt sick to his non-existent stomach. He felt like one for all was trying to rip him apart because of how angry it was with him. Izumi is what's said in the letter about you and the Bakugos true. Toshinori asked slowly fearing the answer. She didn't answer for a few moments but responded. Yes. I don't know about the suicide baiting part but everything else was true to my knowledge. Izumi said. This just made the parents break down even more. 
I need to call Nizu, Gran Torino, Nightech, Recovery Girl, and the detective. We need their help. Toshinori said. This was how bad it was. All Might was willingly calling his old sidekick who he hasn't talked to in a long time. Time skipped, two hours had passed and everyone was in the room in front of the Yagi family. So All Might, please tell us what you called us for. You said it was a family emergency. Nizu said. Everyone was wondering what it was. All Might handed Nizu the letter and he started to read it. As time passed his face became angrier and angrier. Nizu throws the teacup at All Might this shocked everyone that didn't know what the letter said since Nizu loves tea. Are you kidding me? How f dare you All Might? I should arrest you right now for what you've done. You're lucky you're the damn symbol of peace or you would be sitting in jail tonight. Nizu raged out. Everyone else that was called was really confused at this point. What was in the letter that was so bad that set Nizu off like that? Sir Knight I grabbed the letter so he and the others could read it. They soon understood what happened and they understood why Nizu was acting like he was. Why did we never learn of your son until now? Gran Tornio yelled out. He was so off because Toshinori was a hypocrite for treating his son this way, for telling him to be realistic. It never crossed our minds. It just happened that we pushed him out of our lives and it resulted in this. Toshinori said. Bullshit. Stuff like this doesn't just happen. Recovery Girl said. Sir Night I had a guess that All Might had planned to give Izumi the quirk and wanted to know if he had done it already. All Might. I'm guessing you were planning to give Izumi one for all. Please tell me you didn't give it to her already. If you did she needs to give it to someone else since she is clearly the wrong type of person for it. Your son is a far better person to wield it and should receive it. Sir Knight I said with a cold tone. Izumi just flinched at this and spoke up. No, he hasn't given it to me and I have to agree I don't deserve it, Izumi said with some tears in her eyes. Inko just put her hand on her shoulder and rubbed. Soon the conversation moved to what to do next. You guys will have to report your son missing. Are you going to do it as the Yagis or as the Hero family? Do it as Yagis and there won't be much search by police and heroes due to bias against quirkless people. Announce it as heroes and your reputation takes a hit but you will get a better search going. The detective asked. It was soon decided that it would be done as All Might and Green Tornado since they needed to own up to this. All Might wouldn't have his form forever. As such, it would get linked back to them anyway. Better to deal with it now rather than later. Time skip, a day has passed and Mighty Tower had arranged a press conference. Everyone was wondering why the meeting had been called and soon they would receive their answer. There was even an agent from Titan at the meeting recording for Hisashi who wanted to be kept up to date on the Yagi's movements for a while. Soon All Might and Green Tornado came out to the stage. Reporters were trying to ask all sorts of questions. Soon things calmed down and they started. Thank you for coming. Today, my wife and I are announcing the start of a missing person case that is personal to us. The mission person is my son Izuka Yagi who has gone missing as of last Friday. All Might said. This created a shocking amount of reactions. It was known that the family had a daughter but didn't know her name. Now the family just confirmed a son that no one knew about who is now missing. People wanted answers. Reporters were asking questions left and right. Our son ran away from home due to neglect from our family and the physical violence that he received from his school that was never reported. All Might said. The Yagis then went on to explain the result of their neglect and how their quirkless son had gone missing and that they had only now noticed. Our treatment of our son wasn't correct. Nor should it be accepted in society. All we're asking is for people to help us find our son and allow us the chance to redeem ourselves with our son. Inko said. They provided a picture they obtained from the school yearbook that showed their son. Though it was a vast understatement of how he truly looked since he was far buffered than the clothing showed. Some reporters asked if All Might and Green Tornado would be brought up on criminal charges. At this time, we don't know what the police will do with us. We will have to wait and see, stated Inko. 
Soon the press conference came to an end and the entire of Japan was in an uproar. Corkless rights groups were protesting against All Might and Green Tornado while others were just wanting people to focus on finding the child. However, what no one knew but a few was that Izuku was no longer in Japan but on an entirely different continent. Time skip one week has passed and the police judgment has come back for everyone involved. The Yagis and Bakugos with the other people that know about OFA were all sitting in a room at Mighty Towers. I just want to be clear. None of you can ever enter UA on recommendations. You entering UA will be a very great blessing and you will be on probation during your entire time at UA. You're still young and have time to grow. You're lucky that the laws prevent you from being arrested for villain acts since protects you for quirk usage until the age of 8 which you are all at. Anything from this point forward involving quirk usage will be a villainous act. Your records will show the bullying though, stated Nizu. Everyone agreed with this. You three will be required to attend therapy and anger management moving forward and while you attend UA or any hero school in the future. Failure to comply results in being kicked or banned from a hero school. Nizu said. Once again everyone agreed with it. Now the adults. You two have received a suspension from hero duties for two months. You will be required to pay a hefty fine and do a lot of. Volunteer work. The only reason you're not in jail is because of how much this country relies on you to support it and overall you haven't screwed anything else up. As such, you're walking on very thin ice. Any screw-up in the future will result in prison time being added on right away without trial due to the agreement you signed. Do you understand that? Nizu asked and they said they understood. They would face 10 years in prison if they screwed up even once more in regard to any action against a child. They only got away from prison time due to their clean records and how much the country relies on them as Nizu said. Now, so far there hasn't been any luck in Izuka's case. No one can find him. The police don't believe they are going to have much luck either. They aren't finding any clues and think the case will go cold soon. If the case goes cold for longer than six months then he will be declared dead. The detective said. You do understand how likely it is for him to actually survive on the streets at his age right? The detective asked and no one needed to hear the answer since they all knew it. They had an 85% chance of finding him being dead in an alley. They didn't need it verbally said. I will keep you up to date on the case even after it goes cold but the longer it's cold the likelier it's for him not to be alive. I'm sorry. Said the detective as he got up and left. It was not known at the time but it would be years before they would meet Izuku again. Even then they refused to make a grave for him and refused to admit that he was dead. They refused to give up at their last chance of making it up to their son or brother. Izuku had gotten used to his life with his new father rather quickly. He would wake up and make breakfast for both him and his father and then go down to their private training room and do some light work out before returning upstairs to eat with his father before they went about their day. Each day, Izuku would create some new breakfast and today was a traditional Japanese breakfast. One each day, Izuku would create some new breakfast and today was a traditional Japanese breakfast, I'm going to give up on trying to stop you from cooking all the time. I'll just cook the other meals since you seem to enjoy doing breakfast all the time anyway. Hisashi said as he came down to the kitchen and sat down with Izuku to eat. I also do it because I noticed you tend to not eat breakfast if I don't. As such, it's to make sure you don't go hungry during the day either. Izuku said while sticking his tongue out at his dad who just gripped it with his chopsticks. Cheeky brat, Hisashi said. Soon they finished eating and Izuku went down with Hisashi to start their day. Hisashi would go do work for his business and mercenary group while Izuku would find the Titans group leader for that day and start his lessons. Today's lesson was with Ace and we would be working on my understanding of strategy in combat. We would also start working on applying my knowledge of quirks in combat as well since I've gotten good enough to pinpoint the weakness of quirks during combat in real time. Hello, Ace. What are we doing today? Izuku asked. We are going to work on you leading a team from a remote location into a battle. You will be given all the information you typically might know and it will be up to you to lead that team to win or fail. 
We will use the simulation rune for this which will generate the battlegrounds for you and you will have a team of agents under your control while someone else will have a team as well. Ace said. Soon we made it down to one of the deeper floors and Izuku was lead into a command center looking room. Izuku could see on the table a hologram of the battlegrounds where the fight would take place in the simulation room Izuku could see on the table a hologram of the battlegrounds where the fight would take place in the simulation room. Izuku spent 30 minutes reading over the intel that he was provided and he made notes to remember important things. Soon, he was ready for the fight and radio into his team. Radio check men, Izuku said and received a radio check back from his five men that were under his command. Soon Izuku relayed information he believed that they would need and the battle started. Izuku had split them into two teams with two men together and the other three together. The two men were off to the side a bit from the main team and would react to threats that presented themselves when the main team was spotted. Izuku had split them like this because the two-man team quirks helped each other fight and allowed them to react far quicker than the other three. Soon the teams came across the enemy and Izuku's plans were coming out in his favor. Alpha 1 and 2 Be watching for a tango that likely split from the main group. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to come around the long way on your sides. Izuku called out to his two-man squad. As Izuku thought, there was a man with a camo quirk that was trying to sneak around them. They were able to kill the threat and moved on winning the game by forcing the other team to give up due to them being trapped from multiple sides. Izuku had his two-man squad come from the enemy side and force them to be trapped due to fire that the two-man squad had set. Well done. There were some mistakes but those will go away with the experience. One thing to point out is the fact that the camo quirk user could have gone to the other side. He didn't but it was a real possibility. You need to account for situations like that next time. Ace said. Izuku had noticed that two hours had passed since they had started. Izuku had asked what would be next but Ace said he was done for the day since it finished sooner than he planned. As such, Izuku decided to go out in the city and enjoy himself. Ace told Izuku to take at least two plain cloth guards with him since Hisashi would be devastated if he lost Izuku. Izuku knew he shouldn't risk anything since if people found out his connection they would come after him. As such, he did stop by the room for agent assignments. Hello. I was thinking of going out to enjoy the city since I haven't gotten the chance to since I've arrived in the past two weeks. Ace told me that it would be better if I got some guards to come with me in plain clothes and I agree since it would make dad happy as well. Do you know if there are any agents open to an SCRT assignment currently that would be willing to go? Izuku asked. Hmm. Yes, we got several agents that are needing some experience since they are a bit newer. They are trained to handle the situations but they do need some more hands-on experience. How far are you planning to go? If you are going far or deep into the city populated areas then I will assign others. If going in a less populated area then they should be fine. Ask the assignments agent. I'm planning to go to the forest nearby. I think it's called the Plunderwald Forest. It has a playground on it. I've never really gotten to enjoy playgrounds without being attacked back in Japan so I want to try to have some fun for once. Izuku said. By now most of Titan's agents know basic details of Izuku's past. They know he didn't have a good life back in Japan before being adopted by their leader. That will be a fine area for these two newer agents. Please go wait in the lobby and I will have them retrieve you from there. Have you told your father that you would be leaving the building or would you like us to inform him, the agent asked. I'll do. It myself. I'll send him a text message. Izuku said. Soon Izuku arrived in the lobby of the building and waited for the agents. About five minutes later one agent came up to him and introduced himself. Hello, sir I'm Cade. The other agent is outside in the car waiting for us. Cade said. Soon Izuku and the agent named Cade got into the car and drove to the forest. Izuku learned the other agent's name was Dale. After about 10 minutes of driving and they arrived. Thank you guys for coming with me. I know my father would be a bit worried if I didn't take anyone with me. Izuku said. 
The agents just thanked Izuku for letting them come since they didn't have much experience. Even though Izuku was trained well in martial arts and other things and acted like an adult sometimes he was still only a nine-year-old kid. As such, he wanted to play around and not fear getting bullied which he could do here in Germany. Izuku came upon a park area in the forest that had things made out of wood. Izuku saw other kids playing around and started to wander around. He could notice his guards blending in with the crowd. Soon Izuku started to play with other kids around his age and was enjoying himself. Some time passed and he introduced himself to two kids that were playing by themselves. Hello. My name is Izuku. What are your names? Izuku asked. The two kids looked at Izuku and introduced themselves as well. Hi, I'm Luke and this is Kyle. We have another friend named Seth but he isn't here today. Do you want to play with us? Asked Luke. Izuku agreed and soon they hit it off and started to play games together. However, during this entire time, they never made physical contact with each other. That was a key factor in finding out something. Izuku and the two boys soon made their way deeper into the forest area which was outside the viewing area of his guards. Izuku didn't realize that at the time he had set his two guards on a chase on trying to find him since they no longer could see him. About 30 minutes later both Luke and Kyle touched Izuku. It was at that moment that Izuku felt pain across his body but it was more concentrated in his left and right biceps. Ah, why am I in so much pain? Izuku yelled out. This caused his two guards to find him and come running. Kyle and Luke were in shock. They felt their marks burning on the biceps but were in too much of a shock from what they were seeing. Izuku is our soulmate, both of them thought. They knew they were connected but not each other's direct soulmate. They could feel each other but the connection wasn't that of soulmate but as two pieces that required a third piece to be placed between them which was missing. In their days, they didn't realize it until it was too late but Izuku's guards had taken Izuku away. Though the kids thought that they were his parents and not guards since they were in plain clothing. Luke and Kyle tried to give chase but couldn't keep up. We're going to lose sight of our soulmate. They both thought. They arrived back at the playground area and they couldn't see their soulmate or his parents. As such, they ran over to the guards that their family had watching them. The Clayton, Walton, Woods, and White families all belong to powerful families in Europe. The Claytons own Europe's largest hero support company, Walton's owns Europe's largest weapons development firm, Woods own Europe's largest entrainment and media company, and the White family owns Europe's largest healthcare and drag company. They told them that they needed to get to their parents as soon as possible since they had found their soulmate who had just been taken away by his parents. Izuku POV, it hurts. Why does my body hurt so much? The pain had changed from my right and left biceps to my stomach and lower region area now. It hurts so much. It feels like my body is on fire. I want dad. Please dad. Izuka cried out. Third POV, the guards were moving as fast as they could. One guard had called into the main base and alerted them of the situation and told them to get the medical team ready in the building. There's a tactical assault team near us that will meet up and guard us on the way back. Hisashi has been informed and he is that something has happened to Izuku. Said Dale. Cade could only agree with Hisashi feeling right now. How could they F up and let Izuku get attacked somehow on a simple trip to the park? It was unlikely that they would have their jobs after this. They might not have their lives if Izuku doesn't make it out of this. Soon Cade noticed the tactical assault team pull ahead and behind them. They were five minutes away and it seemed like the pain that Izuku was in was only getting worse. Soon they pulled up to the building and went directly into the garage area. There was a medical team waiting with Hisashi Mitaraya. What the hell happened? He yelled out. Sir, we lost Izuku after he followed two kids around his age into the forest. We arrived after hearing a scream from him since we were trying to find him when he went out of our sight. There was only a window of about three minutes between us losing him and him screaming. There are no visible wounds that we can see. Kate stated. The medical team rolled Izuku into the medical wing and started looking him over and doing tests. 
third POV, about one hour had passed since they had gotten Izuku back to the base. The results were back and the doctors were confused like hell. Sir. We have the results and we believe we found the reason he was in so much pain. The doctor said. Hisashi was just worried at this point. The doctor soon showed a picture of Izuku's bicep and explained that he now had two new tattoos or markings on his body but he also received some other things. He also received a new organ system. It appears to be an organ that will allow him to reproduce. We brought him the agent who can figure out quirks. He looked at Izuku again and saw that the hidden power or quirk has been triggered. Whatever happened in that forest triggered the power which resulted in the new marks and new organ system. From what the agent has stated. The new marks are soulmate marks and the new organ is due to the marks. It will allow him to reproduce for his soulmates if they ever attempt to have a child. The doctor said. Hisashi was just confused and asked for more details which the doctor gave. Based on the results. The organ and marks aren't fully active. It requires another step from both sides to complete the bond. The organ is also useless without the bond being completed and only the soulmates can ever use the organ to get the young MSTR PRGN into but it requires his consent to have it work as well. So we don't have to worry about someone random ever getting the young MSTR PRGN into. It also appears the marks provide a boost in healing abilities and acts as a GPS to his soulmates when it's activated. The mark will also burn slightly whenever he meets his soulmates and hasn't completed the bond. The doctor finished saying. Hisashi was happy his son wasn't in danger of death. He was annoyed that his son now has two new soulmates that he knows nothing about but is interested in how that relationship will go. Hisashi then goes to find the guards and he finds them waiting outside. You know why I'm here correct? He asked. The guards nodded. You are lucky my son isn't dead or else this would be the second son I would have lost. Though his pain isn't your fault. It seems his third hidden power was triggered by the two boys he was with. They are his soulmates. Which means we. Now have to find them. Hisashi said. The guard gave the information they knew which was just their first name and a general description. For some reason, Hisashi felt like he knew who they were but couldn't place it. You two will not be killed or fired today. Though my son escaped your sight, it's your job to always keep your client in your line of sight of at least one of you at all times. You two will become permanent guards to my son whenever he needs an SCRT somewhere. There will be other guards as well until you two have enough experience to be by yourself. You're now on guard duty for life so you better get training for any situation and take any free mission in your free time when my son doesn't need you because his word is the law now for you both. Do you understand? Hisashi asked. The guards agreed and thanked him. We will gladly do guard duty for the young MSTR. It indeed was our fault since we didn't keep him in eyesight or even get more details out of the kids. We really screwed up. Thought both Dale and Cade. This was a punishment but also a reward if they can handle doing guard duty for life. If they stay by Izuku's side for his life it means they would be in the center of power when Izuku takes over for Hisashi. As such, it was a punishment and a reward if they could push to the end. Several hours had passed since the doctors had figured out what happened. Izuku had started to wake up and was calling for his dad. Dad dad Izuku was crying out. I'm here son. You're going to be okay. Hisashi said as he came over to Izuku and rubbed Izuku's head. Soon Izuku's eyes opened and he saw his father sitting there. I'm sorry it seems I can't go anywhere without being hurt, Izuku said. This made Hisashi's heart hurt since this wasn't Izuku's fault at all and also the fact that Izuku believes that all of the pain he has suffered was his fault. It isn't your fault. The pain was caused by the hidden power inside your body. It seems those two boys you met were the trigger for it. Hisashi said. Izuku was stunned for a few seconds. The third power in his body was activated. What exactly did the two boys trigger in him? What what did they trigger? Izuku asked. Then Hisashi looked a bit around and dismissed anyone that was in the room except the main doctor because he believed Izuku would want some privacy about his new condition. 
Well son it triggered some changes in and on your body. Do you know the agent I had look at your quirks last time? Izuku said yes. Well, he came again and helped the doctors. Hisashi said with a bit of silence and then started again. Sun the power or the third quirk, in this case, it's called soulmate bond, Hisashi said. Izuka knew what a soulmate was but he couldn't believe that he had a soulmate. So I have a soulmate how does that work and why was my body in so much pain? Izuku asked. Izuka's heart was more or less closed off to being loved by others except for Fong who didn't judge him for being quirkless and helped him train and his new dad who providing him a new home and the chance at a new life. He's learned not to open his heart to others too much and only do so once they prove themselves to him. Well, the soulmate bond is actually two soulmate bonds. It seems you have two soulmates. It's both of those boys. The pain is due to the bond being awaked in your body to prepare you for a relationship with them. First, you have two new marks on your body. One looks like a lighting kitsune and then another is a void kitsune. Hisashi said as he pulled a mirror out so Izuku could see them better on his biceps. Asterisk soulmate marks look like this. Imagine one is white with lighting and another is black like below with void energy around it. When they are activated fully, the marks will take a green tint to the lighting and void energy. Asterisk, I like how the marks look. However, that doesn't explain the pain across my body does it? Izuku asked a bit weary. Indeed son. You are smart and would notice that. The soulmate marks when fully activated when each soulmate each other's respective mark will grant each side an increased healing ability and the marks will allow you to sense your soulmate's emotions and act as a GPS for you to find them. Hisashi said while stalling a bit for the last part since he doesn't know how Izuku would act. You're stalling dad, Izuku said. Indeed. It granted one more thing. This last thing like the others is useless until you activate the bond completely. The mark will tell you if you're ever close to your soulmate again. Now the part I've been stalling on Izuku the soulmate bond adapted your body to bear children. Hisashi said while reading his son's face. Izuku was just shocked his body was adapted to bear children what did that truly mean for him is the question. Can you explain a bit more about the change to my body? Izuku asked. It means that you have a brand new organ in your body that only the two other boys can use. Whenever you find them and finish the bond, you three can have you bear a child for you all if you consent to it. Meaning if you had SEC with those two boys later in life then if you had the longing to bear a child at that moment your body's new organ would activate and allow you to get PRG in it. You can't have children with any other males besides those two. The organ is useless without those two. Hisashi said. Izuku was stunned Izuku always knew he was gay for a while since his female classmates never interested him but he didn't think he would ever have a child because he was gay. He always thought he would have to adopt a child to fill that need if he wanted one but now he could have a child if a relationship with those two boys happened in the future. However, make no mistake. Izuku isn't going to just open his heart for two random boys because of a quirk. Nope. They will have to work for it. I understand and am a bit happy about that change. I am gay dad, Izuku said with a bit of nervousness. Hisashi wasn't that shocked since he had a feeling his son was based on how Izuku would look at the male members of his group more than the females. Izuku was still young but Hisashi knew that Izuku was more mature due to his childhood. As such, Hisashi expected him to be a bit more knowledgeable in the opposite SEC but still inexperienced. I had a feel son and it doesn't matter to me. However, what are you wanting to do about your two soulmates? Do you want to find them? Hisashi asked. Yes and no. Even if I find them it doesn't mean I will start a relationship with them. You know my childhood. As such, if they want to gain my heart they will need to work for it. I'm not going to just open my heart and give myself to them without them treating me correctly. You're the wealthiest man in the world and have an army behind you. So Bin if they are rich they can't buy me off with things. Izuku said while taking a breath. Then he went on to say a bit more. They will need to put their hearts into it and work for me to accept them. If they aren't willing to do so then they don't deserve me. 
I am gay found them cute and wouldn't be against exploring a possible relationship with them. However, just because the universe and fate said that they are meant to be my soulmates doesn't mean I will just accept it if they refuse to work for it. I refuse to be tied down just because of a quirk. Izuku said. Hisashi was happy that Izuku was refusing to be tied down just because of a quirk. He was happy that his son was wanting his own free will outside of the soulmate. Mark. Hisashi has heard of other soulmate marks before and all of those relationships went amazing but it still doesn't concern Hisashi as a father on who the two boys are and how they would treat his son. He's protective even more now that his son can get PRGN and Time skipped soon Izuku had finished talking with Hisashi and felt like he could walk again. Hisashi did explain to him that he now had two permanent guards which were the two new agents as punishment for them. Anything you want they will do. If you want them to jump from a bridge into a river then they shall do it. It's their punishment but also a reward if they are willing to protect you and stay by your side to the end since you will take over Titan in the future. Hisashi explained and Izuku accepted this. After eating lunch for the day, Hisashi explained that he had plans to introduce Izuku to the board of directors for the business but that could be delayed if Izuku didn't feel up to it since the events of today had just happened. Izuku wanted the meeting to keep going. He wouldn't give the board of directors a reason to reject him and cause his father problems. As such, it was decided that they would go meet the board in about one hour when they all arrived downstairs. Hisashi had called a tailor and had a suit made to fit Izuku. Looking good son. Now let's head downstairs and start this meeting. Hisashi said. After about five minutes of walking through hallways. They soon arrived at a room. Hisashi just opened the door without knocking and Izuku came into the room and saw a room filled people board members sitting at a table. Welcome, sir, welcome, sir. Said one of the board members. Everyone got up and bowed their heads a bit at Hisashi and then they saw Izuku. They heard some rumors about him but now it was confirmed that he was real. Izuku pulled up a chair and sat down next to his father who sat at the head of the table. Please sit everyone. I want to introduce my son to you all. He will lead the Titan group and all of the business in the future. All of the Titan's leaders have already approved of my son the first time they met him and have started to train my son in everything he will need to lead the Titan group in the future. Hisashi said. They could hear some people whisper and some were nodding their heads. Sir, no disrespect but how can we know this random child you picked off the street will be a good fit to run the business? One member asked. Everyone turned to look at him. I expected at least one person on the board to say something. It's not like the Titans group where they all gave in due to Fong approval, thought Hisashi. Hisashi was surprised though when Izuku spoke up. That is a valid point, sir. However, no one is born a perfect or good fit for anything. Everyone here went through training and education to fill the role that you are now in. All I ask is that you trust my father's judgment and watch my growth. I am willing to meet any challenge this board sets in front of me. It will be a long time before my father starts to step back from leading Titan or his companies. As such, we have time for any challenge you want to throw at me, sir. Izuku said with his back straight and eyes full of determination. Hisashi and the other members of the board were impressed with Izuku's resolve and willingness to take on the opposing board member challenge. Good. Good. You have a strong backbone. I'm willing to back down and watch your improvement and how you will overcome the challenges we place in front of you. Otherwise, you seem like you will grow into your father's position. The opposing board member said. Everyone was a bit surprised since this board member was known as the more strongliner member of the board. Soon the meeting moved forward and they talked about how the overall corporation was doing. Izuku found out that his father's corporation was a conglomerate of many businesses. They had their hand in pretty much everything and anything. Though they were not number one in Europe they were number one in a lot of other things in the world. Izuku started to take notes and look over budget sheets that were presented to everyone. Now don't let it be said that Izuka claims to be an expert in the business field. But he can say he is very good at running numbers and analyzing things. Izuka noticed something off about the statements. 
One statement was produced by the accounting department and another was produced by some internal programs that pull the numbers from the individual companies. Izuku noticed there was about a $500,000 difference in sales between a company that produces electrical parts for the other business that his father owns and what the accounting department reported to the board. Companies were reporting higher sales than what the accounting department was showing. It wasn't all in one large amount but more about $40,000 difference each month. That was a bit weird because there wasn't enough expense reported by the business to account for this gap but the accounting department did report for it. You don't need to stress about understanding the financials. You will learn with time. Hisashi said which caught Izuka's attention. He saw everyone looking at him. It's it's. Not that I don't understand them. For the most part, I do. But one section caught my attention and the numbers don't add up from what company A is reporting and what accounting that complies everything for this meeting is reporting. There is about a $500,000 gap for the entire fiscal year that the accounting company A and accounting reported. There are also no expenses that company A reported that would make up for the gap that the accounting does report which eats up the excess $500,000 that company A reported it earned. Izuku said while showing his father where he was looking at and his notes. Hisashi looked at the documents thinking his son was just misreading but soon discovered the same thing. The numbers don't add up. You are correct in reading the numbers son it seems someone is embezzling from our company, Hisashi said. This made everyone in the room start looking at where Izuku pointed out. I suggest hiring a third-party watchdog to run an audit of the accounting department to determine how widespread the embezzlement is running and to find out who is all involved on any level, Izuku recommended. Some of the board members looked like they wanted to object to allowing a third party in their company records. This would show the public that invests in the other companies that we own that we have their interest at heart and are taking the matter with utmost importance and will deal with anyone on any level that is involved with the embezzlement, Izuku said. Though the parent company was a private one, it owns a lot of the others that were public. As such, Izuku's recommendation would show they were dealing with the problem and also keep the investors trust that no one from the parent company board of directors had their hand in the cookie jar. I have to agree. A lot of our companies that we own are still public and haven't been turned private. The company that is affected that we know of is a public one. As such, it will be important that we show the investors we are going to deal with anyone on any level that had their hand in the cookie jar. Hisashi said backing up his son since the proposal was a smart one. The board soon agreed since they had no other options that would ease the investors' worries. It seems you are better suited for this work than I thought Izuku. I look forward to the future, stated the board member that had spoken out against Izuku when he was first introduced. Hisashi was happy with this result since Izuku was working on the hardliner members at a faster rate than he thought possible. Time skip, the meeting came to an end and Izuku returned with his father to their living room. Good job in the meeting son. You have impressed the Titans leader and the board of directors. Keep it up and there will be no one objecting to you taking over for me in the future. Hisashi said as he was cooking. Thank you, dad, Izuku said, thank you, dad, Izuku said. Soon they were eating and Hisashi decided to bring up his training and education. Son, you will start middle school in the coming months. You've been keeping up with your language skills. As such, I see no problem with you attending school. I know you would rather just be homeschooled but you need to make friends your age since you need communication skills for when you go to high school for heroics. The middle school that you will attend is called Frankfurt Advanced Education. Once you are done there you will attend the world's top hero school called Frankfurt High Advanced Education or FHAE for short. Both schools are connected and will help complete a smooth transition between them. Hisashi said. Izuku was thrilled to go to a new school. People wouldn't bully him because he was quirkless anymore since he had his quirk now. Also, Europe had better laws protecting quirkless people as well. Also, about one month before you attend the middle school we will be attending a party that I was invited to. I will introduce you to other power families that you may end up working with in the future. This will also allow you to meet some of their kids. I know some are spoiled but other families educated their children to be humble and grow up knowing the value of money so that they don't destroy the family business when they take over. 
Hisashi said. As such, Izuku would start taking on more education to get him prepared for the formal party so he doesn't embarrass himself. It was also decided that Hisashi would have doctors and trainers prepared to figure out how to best prepare his body for his quirk training so Izuku would be ready since Frankfurt has quirk training classes. After the board meeting and the talk with Hisashi, one month has passed. The third-party watchdog group went through and finished their audit of the company records. They discovered that there were only a few bad actors in the accounting department that were causing the fraud. The people were dealt with and handed over to the police. The announcement to the media was made about the board of directors discovering the fraud and bringing in a third-party watchdog to do the audit. This announcement made most of the public company's stocks increase due to the parent comparing quick dealing of the situation and public acknowledgement of the situation. Outside of that situation, Hisashi had Izuku start learning dancing skills and proper etiquette for a formal party. Izuku first learned how to dance in several different ways but the primary was the ballroom dance. While doing the dance training, Izuku was also learning the proper etiquette for eating at fancy parties and gatherings so he would be able to keep up with everyone in the future time skip three months have passed since Izuku had started the training. Overall, he was doing great and was about to MSTR most of the training for formal gatherings. As such, it was time to shift some of his focuses to his general education to ensure he is meeting the standard of his middle school. The Titans group was already teaching him the most basic things to ensure his education was up to date for his age. However, they reported to Hisashi that Izuku had demonstrated advanced knowledge of subjects by the time they were finished and recommended that he was tested for his current knowledge. As such, that is how Izuku found himself in a government testing room where he was given multiple tests to understand his current knowledge. Izuku was dead tired by the end of the day. Izuku was given tests on many subjects and even given tests on current European political climate issues to see how much he needs to learn about his new home. Hisashi and the government officials were shocked. Izuku had demonstrated high knowledge in several subjects while maintaining a good grasp of most middle school subjects. Izuku did worst on the test about European matters but did better than they thought he would. As such, it was decided that Izuku's education was good enough for him to attend middle school without a problem. Izuku would need to put work in on the European history and current political climate but would be able to catch up. It was also decided that he would be placed in all advanced classes in his middle school which would be teaching high school level subjects. The middle school was already an advanced school but their advanced classes were even harder than average school's advanced classes. Son. Good job on the tests. You will be placed in all advanced classes but will need to catch up on European knowledge. Hisashi said to a drained Izuku who was laying down on the couch in the living room. Izuku just groaned out because he was mentally exhausted from doing tests all day. Now since we know your education is advanced enough we can spend more time on court training than I had planned. Titan has finished building the solar energy room so we will be able to test your absorption skills. Also, we will go to the court training grounds that are outside the city and train your destructive abilities. Hisashi said which made Yusuke shoot up since he hasn't been allowed to do much court training yet. Yes yes yes. Court training. Izuku shouted. This just made Hisashi laugh. Time skip one week it's been a week since Hisashi said they would start doing quirk training. They took a tactical assault team with them and headed out to the Titans quirk training grounds for more destructive quirks. They knew Izuku could enhance his body due to how he used it the first time. As such, they wanted to be careful of him using his quirk underground in the Titan building. Asterisk sky view of the training ground. Asterisk Izuku POV, OK. Time to get some quirk training in. We arrived at the training grounds and I got out. The agents lead me and dad over to an empty space and said I could do whatever I wanted to test out. Okay, son. I want you to relax and just try to feel for your quirk. I want you to describe how it feels to you. Dad asked. Soon I just relaxed and pushed everything else out of my mind. I waited for a few moments and then I felt it. It feels it feels like a raging blaze. It feels like the energy of the sun itself. I said. Soon I could feel the sun expanding slightly. As I stand here I can feel the ball of energy or my inner sun start to expand slightly, I said. 
understood son. Now that expanding feeling is due to you passively absorbing energy while being in sunlight, dad said. I could feel it slowly expand with each second. Soon I figured out how to actively absorb and could feel my inner sun expand at a much faster rate. I figured out how to actively absorb. My inner sun is expanding at a faster rate now. It's about double the size now. I said. Dad had me stop absorbing activity and had me relax for a few moments. Okay son, now we are going to work on using the energy inside you to enhance your body. I've asked the agents that were sent with us to have some. Enchantment quirks. As such, let's get their view on how they activate their quirks to enhance their body. Dad said. Soon one of the agents stepped forward and explained his quirk. He stated for him that he spreads the energy across his entire body and has it on constantly when wanting to use it. Soon I started to attempt at using my quirk to enhance my body. I stood still and focused on my inner son. I attempted to pull some energy out and I felt the sun respond to me. It soon created split off a smaller sun that took the shape of my body. I explained this to my father and the agent. They suspected that I would be able to use the energy for many other things but that the main sun was the energy pool of stockpile power while the mini body was what I was pulling into my body for active use. The agent suggested attempting to throw a punch with the current amount of power it sent off. I got up and threw a punch. It created a dust cloud to rise up and made some cracks on the ground 60 miles per hour, one agent called out. He had a machine that could measure the speed of air. The air I created went 60 miles per hour and now, do you feel the power in all of your power or just your arm, asked the agent. I feel it across my entire body, I stated. Then the agent had me start running around and we found out that I was much faster, stronger, agile and had better reflexes. It turns out that they had a machine they wanted me to punch. I did it and my punch came back stronger than All Might Punch in his youth. We've now found your base strength which we will call 100% and anything extra you pull from the sun will be in addition to the base. Anything you remove to lower your power will decrease 100% until you hit 0% which would be your natural body's abilities. Now, it's time to see if you can pull more energy from the main sun and feed it to your miniature body. Dad said. The agent suggested that I attempt to create a link or a chain that connects the main sun and my miniature body. Soon I closed my eyes and visualized the sun and miniature body. I attempted to create a natural path that connected the two. Soon with a bit of thinking I was able to create an active wave of energy flare that looked like it was feeding into my body. It started to make my miniature body grow and I actively thought of using the percent method dad suggested. I then thought of 200% which caused my miniature size body to grow to double the size. However, the connection between the two didn't stop, instead, a new connection that fed back to the main sun started and the energy stayed at 200%. I opened my eyes and I could feel the difference in my body. I felt the difference in strength. I explained what happened and the agent and dad were shocked that I figured it out so quickly and that the energy was constantly being supplied and fed back to the main sun if it went over what I wanted. Okay, sir. Please attempt to throw another punch. It should be double of what you did last time for the speed. The agent said. Soon I threw the punch and heard the call on the speed of air. 120 miles per hour, called the agent off to the side. I was able to create a wave of air with my punches that could cause the air to move so fast. Next, dad had me practice lowering the percent down so I didn't kill anyone. He wanted me to get better at decreasing the percent more than percent since I would need to control that better before moving forward. We spent the rest of the day practicing and had me spar with the agents on site. I was able to lower my percent down to anything I wanted within two seconds. Dad wanted me to practice more in the future at the main building and get it down to an instance or one second. I wasn't allowed to use more than 50% of my quirk strength inside the building though. They didn't want me to damage the structure of the building. Dad did say that he would arrange more trips out to the training field in the future for me with a tactical assault team to train with when he can't come. Third POV, the family arrived back home and went to clean up from the training. Soon they made it back downstairs and sat down. 
Son, remember you still got time to learn how to use your quirk to its current extent. The middle school you're going to has a quirk training class and they have a field for destructive quirks to be tested on. So don't rush it and harm yourself. Hisashi said to his son. Soon it was time to go to sleep and start their next day. Time skip, third POV, two months have passed and now it was time for the party that his father was invited to. He had responded and told them he was bringing a guest but didn't say who it was. The Midoriyas were wearing the following clothing. They headed downstairs and were to the event place with two tactical teams coming with them they headed downstairs and were to the event place with two tactical teams coming with them. Izuku permanent bodyguards, Dale and Cade, were also there as main guards since everyone was allowed four guards to be present in the room with them. Izuku had his two and his dad had his two. The tactical team would wait nearby in the area in the event something happened. The vehicles pulled up to the building and it was a mansion that was owned by one of the more powerful families in Europe, the White family who own Europe's largest healthcare and drag company. The vehicles pulled up to the building and it was a mansion that was owned by one of the more powerful families in Europe, the White family who own Europe's largest healthcare and drag company, it looks pretty grand but I think I like where we live better since it doesn't require leaving to deal with the business of Titan or the businesses, Izuku said. Hisashi just chuckled at this and agreed with Izuku. Most of the powerful families are from old money like the Midoriyas but we don't have a mansion anymore. I used to but I left it when your mother and brother passed away. Hisashi said. They got out of the car and walked into the building. We were to a room full of people and had tables for people to sit or stand at and an open area for dancing. What the, what the? Izuku thought. For some reason, he felt a burning sensation but thought he imagined it as it went away. As such, he ignored it. Soon Hisashi took Izuku and walked him around to meet some people and introduce him. A lot of people were shocked to hear about Hisashi having a new son. They all realized that Izuku was adopted but he still would take over everything of Hisashi's in the future. Time skip, Izuku POVLI separated from dad about 30 minutes into the party because I wanted to wander around and see if I could find any kids my age. I soon found one kid that was sitting away from others. I decided to walk up to him and introduce myself. Hello, I'm Izuku. What's your name? I asked him. He seemed confused for a second and gave me a glance over. My name is Leon. Why are you here tonight? Leon asked. My dad got invited and he wanted to introduce me to people he knew. I escaped from him about 30 minutes ago and was wandering around looking for people my age when I found you. I didn't go dance since I don't know anyone either and I'm new to dancing. I answered him. You're not trying to SCK up to me. Why? Leon asked. I was confused for a second. Why would I SCK up to him? Why would I SCK up to you? You have nothing I want and I'm just trying to make friends since I'm new to Germany. I've only arrived about five months ago when dad brought me from my BRTH country. I said to him. He seemed shocked and opened up a bit more. I see. Well, most people SCK up to me. Because they want to get close with the next head of the white family when I take over the family in the future. Leon said, ah. I didn't even know you belonged to that family. Dad didn't introduce me to the White family yet. I've only met a few families before I escaped him. This is the first party that I've attended in my life since Dad just adopted me only five months ago. I said not hiding the fact I'm adopted since it would be clear for anyone that saw me and Dad together. Leon POV, he's adopted by some wealthy or powerful family since that's the type of family that got invited here. I wonder which family he belongs to. It seems I might actually make a friend that isn't after something from me. Let's see how this goes. What family adopted you? I asked him. I was shocked when I learned who he got adopted by. Ah. Midoriya. Hisashi Midoriya is my dad now. Izuku said. What that means he belongs to a more wealthy and powerful family than mine. No wonder he doesn't want anything from me. Seems like I will make a friend after all. Want to attempt to be friends. 
I'm only used to fake friends that are after my family support or want to SCK up to me for the future. I asked him. Sure. I did come with the aim of making at least one friend tonight. Dad will be happy since I will start middle school soon. Izuku said. I asked him what school he will be going to and it turns out he will be in the same school and classes as me most likely. Well, the plan is for me to attend the same school and be placed in the advanced classes as well. There is only one schedule of advanced classes since not many get placed into it. So we can even stay in touch better when we go to school. I said and Izuka lit up like a Christmas tree. Soon a guard came to me and said my parents were calling for me. I had Izuka come with me to introduce him to my parents since he was going to be my first real friend. Soon we came upon my parents talking to someone and it turned out to be Hisashi Midoriya. My parents called for me and introduced me to him. Son, this is Hisashi Midoriya. We wanted you to know him and get to know his son whenever Hisashi finds him. My dad said while chucking. No need. I and him became friends already. I said as I grabbed Izuku's hand and pulled him up next to me since he was standing behind my guard. Izuku POV, I hid behind the guard since dad was there. I didn't want to get pulled back into more introductions. However, Leon grabbed my hand and pulled me out in front. I just waved at my dad while looking sheepish. Hey, dad funny seeing you here, I said. He just chuckled and said, well, you escaped me from earlier but it seems your new friend had returned you to me. Thank you Leon, dad said. I just pouted a bit at that. Leon's parents looked a bit confused and then Leon explained more about how I came up to him and became friends with him. He also talked about how we will likely be in the same classes at the middle school. Dad then did the formal introduction. Whites please meet my son Izuku Midoroya. Izuku, meet the Whites. It seems however you've made friends with the son already so you two know each other, Dad said. Soon Dad and Leon's parents talked for a bit longer before they let us go I and Leon went out to the garden area that his family had. We played around a bit but didn't do much since we didn't want to get our clothes dirty we played around a bit but didn't do much since we didn't want to get our clothes dirty. We talked about ourselves and I told him a bit of my history and how I was quirkless. He told me he didn't care I used to be quirkless since his grandmother was and the family didn't care. Then we talked about our quirks and I told him I was still learning. He had a vector control quirk and he said he was really good at math due to learning for his quirk. Time skip, Izuka POV, it was getting closer to the time to end the party. As such, we headed back inside. The party was slowing down and I made my way to my dad while Leon went to his parents. We told each other we would see each other at school. As Izuku and his dad were heading outside, Izuku could feel a slight burning sensation. Dad, the marks are burning slightly, I told dad. He was shocked. He asked if both or just one was burning. Both. Which means both of them are here at the party. I said and then the sensation stopped. It seems that they had already left. It's gone. I think they already left and we had just entered the range just before they left, I said. Hmm. I will contact the whites for a list of all the guests and we can see if we can figure it out. Did you feel it at all besides now? Dad asked and I told him I think when we first arrived but I thought I imagined it since it was only for a second. We decided to just go home and dad would try to figure it out. At least we know they are from the more wealthy or powerful families. That helps limit our search. What I nor dad knew was that my soulmates were running around the entire place all night looking for me but Leon had taken me outside which they forgot to search. As such, they thought I had left already and only realized I was still there when their cars had already left. Their parents had planned to do the same thing that my dad was going to do. However, we would soon find each other sooner than either side thought. Another month has passed and it was now time for the start of a new semester. Izuku had kept doing his studying and training with the Titans group. He was able to figure out that he could bring some energy out of his body but it was currently a slow process since he wasn't used to it. As such, it became one of his main training focuses. Though it was time for Izuku to face the thing he fears the most. School. 
we could find Izuku in his living room pouting about going to school. I don't want to. What if they turn out like my old school I don't want to be bullied again. Izuku groaned. Hisashi just sighed and grabbed Izuku by his leg and dragged him to the elevator with Izuku not fighting back. They soon made it up to Izuku's room where Hisashi forced Izuku to change in his uniform. You look, good son. Now, let's go downstairs. I've got an agent waiting so we can take a picture to celebrate your first day of middle school. Hisashi said. Izuku just lunged and hugged his dad and had small tears in his eyes. Thank you for being such a great dad. Izuku said. Soon they made it downstairs and had their picture taken. What Izuku didn't know was that Hisashi had agents take pictures of them both whenever they could since Hisashi was creating a scrapbook of them. Time to go son, Hisashi called and they got into a car. They set off for the 15-minute drive towards the edge of the city where the school was located at. Wow. This school looks amazing, wow. This school looks amazing. Izuku said. He could see a lady waiting outside the school. Hisashi said that was the principal who was waiting for them so she could show Izuku around the school. Hisashi wished Izuku a good day and said that Izuku's main guards would come to pick him up later on. If he needed to stay late then he should text them and him as well. If he needed to stay late then he should text them and him as well, hello, Izuku. My name is Clara. Welcome to Frankfurt Advanced Education. I will be showing you around the school. If you have any questions please ask me. You will be placed in the advanced classes which you will start today. Normally, most students and their parents visited the school at the end of last semester but we've learned that you are new to Germany and wanted to ensure you know the rules and directions of our school. Please follow me. Principal Clara said. Soon the tour was done and the principal led Izuku towards his homeroom. This will be your homeroom for the rest of your time here. Homeroom 1S, Principal Clara stated. I was sent inside and I saw the only person there so far was Leon. Izuku POV, hey, Leon. I said while rushing over to him and hugging him. It's good to see you again. I said with a happy tone. He just smiled and hugged me back. It's good to see you as well Izuku. I heard from my parents about the soulmate thing. They just gave your dad the list of guests about two weeks ago. Do you know how the search is going? Leon asked. I told him no since there were quite a few guests coming and going from all different families so it would take a bit more time. I know I want to meet them but I don't want to be tied down to them just because of the marks. I want them to actually love me outside the marks and work for my love. You know a bit about my past but it has made me close my heart a bit to others. I've been slowly opening but I'm going to be a bit more on guard with them because of the mark themselves. I said. Soon about 30 minutes passed and more students arrived. One kid came in and he had white hair with black tips on his hair. He introduced himself and told us his name was Seth Woods. Then came the two kids from the park. Luke and Kyle arrived at their school together since Luke's parents dropped them both off. The families have been close since they knew they shared a soulmate. Their parents have been trying to find their soulmate for almost half a year since the incident in the park but couldn't find anyone that matched that description in the city. Because Izuku stayed in the building or only went out with Titan guards to their locations. As such, they were a bit depressed since they have missed the chance to get to know their soulmate twice. First in the forest when the mark appeared and second was at the party when they felt them for a split second but couldn't find them. They even felt them when they left. It was like the world was just jerking their chain the entire time. Soon they arrived outside of their homeroom and they felt the soulmate marks start to burn a bit. They entered with their hopes burning bright and they saw him. It's you Izuku. We found you. Kyle yelled while Luke said we've been trying to find you forever. How were you able to get around all of our family guards that been looking over the entire city for you? Kyle and Luke made their way towards Izuku who was just in shock. He didn't expect to find the two soulmates right in his class. Um. So they're who you've been talking about? Leon asked which made Luke and Kyle look over. Hello, Leon. 
It's been a while since we last met. They both said one after the other. Hey, Kyle and Luke. Been a while. Seth said. Izuku then realized that this was the Seth that his two soulmates mentioned in the forest. It seems everyone knows at least one person in this room, Izuku said which made everyone chuckle a bit. Soon the teacher came in and had everyone sit down so he could start class. Luke and Kyle would keep sneaking glances at Izuku who was sitting with Leon. Leon just laughed at Izuku while Seth just shook his head at his two friends' antics. The class was progressing as everyone answered the questions and did the work the teacher provided. Soon it was time for lunch. Leon and Izuku grabbed their things and walked out of the room. Luke and Kyle just shouted for them to wait while Seth was sighing again at his friend's antics. They have three years to get to know him. If they rush it they will put a negative image in his mind. I know I want to find my soulmate one day but damn they are being crazy. Thought Seth. Soon Izuku and Leon arrived in the lunchroom with Luke and Kyle following close behind Soon Izuku and Leon arrived in the lunchroom with Luke and Kyle following close behind. Izuku just giggled a bit at how they were acting. Leon just shook his head. They really want to get close to you. I guess you won't have to worry about them just wanting you because of the mark. Leon said. Kyle and Luke heard this comment and were worried that Izuku thought they only wanted him because of the mark. They wanted to get to know him outside the mark as well. The mark only helped them find Izuku who was their missing piece. Izuku. We want to get to know you outside of the mark. Luke said in a serious tone. Indeed. We want to prove to you that we would always care and love you. The mark only helped us find who our missing piece was. Everything outside of that is our responsibility of doing. As such, we will prove to you that we want to court you for the rest of your life and will be perfect soulmates for you. Kyle said in a serious tone. Izuku just felt touched a bit but knew they would have to do far more than just say words. He's learned his lesson on people in the past and learned that actions mean more than words. Actions mean a lot more to me than words. My past has been filled with hardship and it has taught me much. I won't submit easily so good luck. Izuku said while grabbing his food and sitting down with Leon. Looks like you two got a long road ahead of you. At least you know he will be nearby for you to work on. However, I first suggest learning more about him like his past before you try for love. Learn what has hurt him in the past will allow you not to repeat those mistakes of others, stated Seth who just grabbed food and walked towards Izuku and Leon. He then introduced himself as the two idiots friend and started to talk about how the first day was going. Kyle and Luke just sat at the same table but didn't try to push Izuku in fear of losing him. They agreed with each other to take it slow and steady. Slow and steady wins the race, whispered them both but it was heard by the entire table who just laughed a bit. Time skip, Izuku POV, lunch came to an end and they returned to class. Soon it was time for the quirk training hour. The teacher took them and lead them to the training ground which was out behind the building. It was the large open field that you could see from the lunchroom. We all changed into gym clothes and were waiting for instructions from the teacher. Hello. A core feature of this school is that most students are going to go for heroics. As such, we give you an hour every other day for quirk training and control. It has proven to increase the standard of heroes that graduate from hero schools in Germany, the teacher said. Soon we all spaced out and I noticed Kyle and Luke both had similar quirks. Are they related? I asked and didn't realize it was out loud. No. They both answered while looking at me. We had an ancestor that married between the families. It was so long ago that it doesn't matter DNA-wise except we both ended up with similar quirks. Doctors think it's because of the soulmate mark we share with you. Luke said. It made me blush thinking about having two kitsune at my side. Leon just made an offhand joke. Looks like you would have perfect loyal guards now won't you? He teased. I just slapped his back with my hand. Shoo, you. I said with a small blush. I feel like he is going to keep making off-handed jokes now. Izuku thought. Everyone worked on their quirk control. 
Seth had a quirk that was like the white tiger from myths in Japan, Leon had the vector. Control, Luke and Kyle had Kitsune quirks, and I with my solar stockpile quirk and energy manipulation. While they were all doing their thing I was focused on my energy manipulation. I didn't want to work on increasing the percent without doing it at the Titan training ground. I instead decided to try and make something out of my energy or do something with it. Uh, Izuku you're floating. Leon said. I opened my eyes and found I was indeed floating. It seems I had wrapped myself with some of the energy without realizing it and it has allowed me to float a bit. Well, I'll be. I said. It seems I've found one way to use my solar energy outside of my body. Now to train this further and get better at it. I said. Everyone just congratulated me and the teacher said it was time to wrap it up and leave for the day. It seems we all let time go by quickly, 